I want you to go to the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20 for a few minutes only. I want you to see the connection between praise and warfare. The connection of praise and warfare the connection of praise and warfare. Praise the Lord for a few minutes only and we will be here to dance and celebrate. To continue whilst we call those people that are being... Uh, uh, many of you know the background of uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat is, uh, uh, is first with an enemy. Verse 1, it says, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other, meaning there were other tribes that also joined the Ammonites and the Moabites to come against Judah. And by that time, Jehoshaphat was the king. There were such a great multitude coming against him. That the Bible says now, can you give me two and three? That the Bible says, that, then there came a message to him from another person. Says, a multitude, a great multitude is coming against you. And in verse three, so that we, we keep time. In verse three it says, and Jehoshaphat, Feared. Because there was a, such a great multitude coming against him. So he was afraid. afraid. So what he did was, the Bible, as you, when you go home, you read at your own time. He sought the face of God. Many of you that were here, you will see what Pastor Nirenda commented on how you operated as a son as well as a servant to God. Very, very important. When you find yourself to be a servant to God, accept you a servant. Because there are situations that provide you as a servant to him. But there are times when you can sense the ability in you. And you can sense that you are a son. You are an authority. You are a man on authority. And you should be able to stand as a son. Amen. Get the message and lead for, uh, listen to yourself. But at this time, I, I shared some things, some things on the same chapter. This time around, he goes to... He seeks the face of God. And the Bible says the spirit of the Lord came on a prophet. A Levite, and he, he, he spoke to the, to the congregation, to Jehoshaphat and the rest of the, the people that were there. What the Lord is about to do. And he says, don't fear. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Now, let's go to verse 17. And let's read these things very fast because I want you just to capture the connection of praise and warfare. Verse 17, 17, 1, 7. It says, you shall not need to fight in this battle. This is not Jehoshaphat, it's the Levite. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. So, he says, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Can you say, set yourselves? He says, stand. That's what the Spirit of the Lord said. Set yourself and stand. He did tell them to praise him. He didn't say put the pleasures. It didn't come from God. Oh, what the Spirit of the Lord says. Take your stand. Set yourself out and take your stand. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, if you go to verse 19, I'm jumping so that you follow exactly. Go to verse 19. Verse 19. Uh, uh, let's go to 20. To 20. Okay. As the laws erred in the morning and went forth in the wilderness, the call and also says, it says, and this is now what Joseph had announces, believe in the Lord and believe in the prophets. And this is 21. Just follow this. 21. And when he had concerted. Deeper. Okay. 
The spirit of the Lord says the battle is not yours. Set yourself and take your stand. That's all what he said. So they needed to define what would be their stand in order to see God fighting on their behalf. Are you following what I'm saying? They needed to define. The word concerted is the word that means to deliberate, like to take an advice. Take an advice. Now, the word advice, or rather to take a counsel, to come together and take a counsel to deliberate. Now, the word counsel in the Bible does not suggest or imply wrong counseling. Although there are times when you can get a long counsel. But the meaning from the counsel is always the right counsel. Wisdom. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if we apply the meaning of that word, I think during my time when I was teaching about this, I ever explained about this. That although there is a wrong counsel, but that word does not suggest that anytime you want a counsel from God, you should be misdirected. Anytime you say, I want a counsel from God, you want to be directed well. That's what that, uh, that word means to God. So when he took the counsel, that's when he came up with the musicians. He says, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. So when they sat down, it is good be that there were some people that the Holy Ghost helped them to understand the connection of praise and battle or praise and warfare that there is something else that will make God to fight on our behalf. And what we need to do is to sing if you don't know this, you know what your stand could have been? Is to take your, your guns. Some of us, our stand has been to, to confront a person. Because we really don't know what to do. I'll go and confront him. So you go and meet a, a guy and you think you're doing the right thing. When it may be all what God is asking you is to close yourself in your room, put on a song, and make a dance you have never done in your life. Maybe all what the Lord is asking you to do is to laugh and celebrate. But when these people took, uh, when they deliberated and they sat together, they saw fit which is not wise to us to put singers in front of the soldiers. And those who were appointed as singers, I believe they understood what place is all about. If we are facing the enemy here, and I say you, you, you too. Or I say praise team. You'll be the one in front. And the soldiers will be second. You will see the way they will look at me. Unless if they understand the reason why they have to be in front. But there wasn't complaining there. When he says, seeing as you've been flung to face the enemy, they celebrated. Imagine they took their trumpets and they're in front, going against the enemy. You know the, the way they were fighting, these guys. They were using these local weapons, bows and arrows, and you have a trumpet. Oh, you are mighty God. You are ma Someone has got a bow and an arrow facing on you like this. And you believe that what you are shouting will stop the bow and an arrow. You should know what you are doing. But they didn't say, hey, what are you doing, sir? They accepted. Because they knew praise has got a connection with the warfare. When you put place in any situation you are fighting, you have provoked the God of war. A God of war. 
Confrontation, not all the times will be the best solution. No. Listen from the spirit of God. Maybe sometimes it's just for you to dance and celebrate. Maybe to give a shout and laugh. Not to say anything. And these people did that. And the Bible says, when they started singing, when they started singing, God set an ambush. Brought confusion in their heart. They started pointing fingers at themselves. By the time the singers are arriving at the place, they found everybody is dead. Amazingly, you must understand they were killing each other. If you are killing each other here, you would expect that there will be at least one man standing. Huh? But God made sure that as he was stabbing this one, this one has already stabbed him. Yeah. So they all died at the same time. There was no last man. Standing. They came there while they are shouting. They come there, they found corpses. Lying the God of war has been provoked, invoked in a situation by the power of peace. And this is what happened in the book of Acts. They threw Paul and Silas in a prison. Put chains in the, in the, in the chapter 16. Put chains here. Instead of crying and complaining, Paul says, Silas put on a dancing shoes. <laughs> Although they have changed us, they have made one mistake. They have not closed our mouth. Our mouth will praise God. They are in sick. They have been chained both legs and the arms like this. But Paul was still dancing with God. Cyrus joined dancing with Paul. And the Bible says the place they offered in a prison invoked the God of war that there was an earthquake that the prison shook and all chains praise his power praise his power but what is it that is in place that makes God to be so fierce. Mostly when you praise him in a situation that somebody is attacking you. What is it that is in place or what place does that makes God become a God of war when you are praising him? In Psalms 22. Ay, ay, ay. Are you there? Say amen if you're there. Psalms 22, verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. But thou art holy to... He what? In habit. In what? In the places of his people. And what? God inhabits in the presence of his people. The Hebrew word inhabited is yashabu. That word yashabu is not to inhabit or to dwell, but is to sit down. Not to sit down only, but it speaks of sitting down as a judge. 
So when people start to praise God, in any situation you're praising God, you are praising God, you more you make or you cause God to sit in that situation as a judge. What does a judge do? <laughs> mm. Is to vindicate and condemn. He seeks to vindicate one and condemn another person. There will be an applicant and defendant in that situation. And your God sits in that situation. While you are they are talking bad of you. You are busy praising God. While you are praising God, you are causing God to sit as a judge. And that judge, brother, is the one that says, and God dwells in the congregation of the mighty. And he says, why are you judging unjustly? Why are you leaving the wicked free? Meaning when God comes, he will never let the wicked be spared. That's one power of praise that makes God to come as a God of all. It is praise will make God to sit in that situation as a judge. As a judge, are you getting what I'm saying? He will come and sit there as a judge in your affair. So if something else is happening, don't worry. Don't worry. Dance for it. Thank God for it. You see what is happening. You see what is happening. God will sit in that situation as a judge to judge your matter. He will vindicate you and condemn whoever is after your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's number one. Number two, praise empowers your hands for all. Yes. In fact, praise releases a spiritual sword in your hands. There is a sword that you don't see. When you are praising God, there is, a, there is strength that comes from nowhere. It is different from worries and complaining. Complain. Complain weakens your spirit. Praise strengthens your spirit. When you are praising God in a situation, strength comes from nowhere. Your mind is vaporized. You feel strength from nowhere. You are like, what is going on with me? Is it different to sit down and start complaining? Are you getting this? Look at what the, what the Bible says. Psalm 149 verse 6. Someone will be blessed today. The enemy is about to run seven times. I said the enemy today is running seven times. Are you following what I'm saying? Miracles have got tendency to duplicate themselves. You are cancer. Is about to die. When I say you are cancer, I mean any condition and situation that is refusing to go. That the world is saying there is no cure, there is no answer, there is no situation. It is a cancer to your life. Just because you held the testimony of cancer, yours is about to go through. I get what I'm saying. Let's see together. One, two, three, go. Let the high presence of God be in your mouth and a true When a place is in the mouth, there is a sword in the heart. You, you see all those people that love to complain around, going um, around, um, complaining, um, talking about their problems. Um, Even God didn't like, the whole reason why he didn't allow the generation of Israel to make it to Canaan, complaining, complaining, but not a pleasure. No. Not a prison. Hey, Hezekiah was dying. There was no sword in his hand. He was going with the sickness. And Isaiah was sent to tell him. Go and tell him his days are numbered. Put your house in order. 
when this became a reality, that is indeed going, something dawned in his spirit. He says, Lord, if I die, who's going to praise you? He says, death does not praise you. Death cannot give praise to God. While Isaiah was on his way, someone is talking sense. Says, I will praise you if you leave me. You let me to leave. God says, where, where were you? All along, what you all what you were saying was complaining. All the sick. Go and lead Isaiah chapter 38. He was all complaining. But until Isaiah said, you are dying, this became a reality. And he says, no. Lord, if you allow me to die, there will never be praise. I want to talk about you. I want to continue announcing about your goodness to the He says, Isaiah, go back. Tell that man, Please us don't die. Please us strengthen themselves. When they are about to go down, if they discover the, the place or place, strength comes from nowhere. Praise in the mouth, sword in the hands. And this is what is about to happen. To As we are praising God today, let God of warfare come in your situation and change everything. Else. Invite him to come. Instead of you complaining, dance. So let me tell you something. My, my, advice. my advice. When a situation, depressing situation happens to you, in most of the times, you know, it's, it's, it's natural. A depressing issue to depress your life. Something wrong has happened you, be, you feel depressed are you get what I'm saying you feel depressed you feel depressed it depresses your spirit and many times you find out that you don't choose to change the way you are calling yourself. It's not a choice at all. It becomes an automatic response. You were in the middle of dancing and whatever. Someone simply sends a message. Depresses your spirit. From nowhere you don't find strength to dance. To celebrate. You hold your hands like this and, look, and just look at everyone. The mistake you do is to find your fellow depressed person who will encourage your depression, promote your depression. When I say your fellow depressed person, is it someone else you think you need a person who is also going through what you're going through? He will understand what you're going through. But the mistake that you are doing is that you are also connecting yourself to another depressed place. Maybe your depression is at the beginning stage. You go to a person that has been depressed for two years. You all know him. Yes, what depression. You go to him and say, he will understand my situation. He is at 7 or 10 or 90 percent depressed. So when you meet, you are two depressed people trying to find college encouragement. Two depressed people. Every time something happens to people, Check the very first people they talk to are the people that are going through the similar problem. It is the wisdom of the man, not the wisdom of the spirit. You don't talk to someone who is going, who is different from you. No, you go to a person. When you know this one is going through financial problems, you don't go to someone who is doing well. You also go to another. So that you can agree and help one another. What you don't know, you are just increasing the problem. 
He will pat at your back and say, I have learned to survive. This is how I survive. I lock myself in a room. And I don't go out for a full day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No. This is my counseling now. Look for another guy that is happy. Check around in the church. Don't go to another one who is grooming. Don't even change the position where you sit. So that you sit in the room of the depressed people. There will be a wrong transfer of the spirit. Sit where everybody is happy. Look at the spot in a church. Where you see that everybody does it. You go to this spot. Because you know Kunje Kunje is not depressed. He's like this all the time. That's where you sit. You don't live here. And you sit. I'm not saying you're depressed. <laughs> That's a mistake that many of us do. And we find out we don't come out from a situation fast. Because we don't look for someone who can counteract our situation. Look for someone that is different. Who is dancing and celebrating at that time. Not another person complaining and vulnerating. God has Wait in you, salvation. It is your responsibility to work the salvation out. It is not about God. He says, work out your salvation. The working in has been done by your God. But it's your responsibility to be wise enough to work out your salvation. Are you following what I'm saying? May 2018, 2018 be a year of praise. In your mouth. Not even a single day. Should, be, should you find yourself depressed? Celebrate from today up to the end of the year. Dance every day. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what is going to happen this in 2018. How many of you have put now dancing shoes? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What I'm going to do now, I'll ask Pastor not for you to come, but just to mention the names of the people. And then you come. In the midst of praise, these people are going to come for dedication. So let's dance with them. Let's celebrate with them. I mean, how many points did I give you? Huh? Two. Yes. Get the last one. Get the last one. Why? Praise is powerful in warfare. The last one is that praise colors God. 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 Praise is a carrier of God. I said, God, uh, praise is a what? A carrier of God. Second Chronicles chapter 5. We, you lead from verse 12 up to 14. Can I lead this for you? Huh? It's important that you get all this because. This topic will never tackle it again. Next, next month, it will be a different angle of praise. Okay. Just look at this. So that the priest could not stand to minister by the reason of the crowd for the glory of the Lord. No, let's not start. I says from verse what? 12. 12. Let's start from 12. And the, also the Levites, which were singers, all of them of Asaph, of Haman, of Judthan, uh, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen. Worship night, right? Mm. Praisers are arrayed in what? <laughs> white linen. Somebody says, why are you asking us to be putting on white <laughs> on the worship night? night? It's scriptural. It's scriptural. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible of the white worship night. And you come with your black suit. You, you are dying and you are black. You are going to black. Lap 
what will happen on that day and you'll be the only one that will remain. <laughs> so they were allayed in white. Okay. He says, having symbols and pastries and harps and stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding with the trumpets. One twenty choir. Sounding with the trumpet. Verse 13. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one. This is the reason why you see, I'm always concerned when praise is not going good. Because I know you have to reach the climax to move God. It has to be. Skillful, I mean, it has to be sung skillfully. That's what in some says. says sing skillfully. Yeah. Raise the bar. He says, when the trumpeters and the singers were as one, that you would think it's one man singing. To make one sound to be held in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpet and symbols and instruments of music and he praised the Lord, he said, for his good, for his mercy, endures forever. That, that then that then the house was filled with the crowd with the crowd even the house of the Lord praise us are carriers of God because praise carries God or brings God you cannot be a praiser and you, are, you have no presence of God on your mind. it doesn't work in that way a cloud will always remain you. because you are singing you are talking you are singing the Bible says in Ephesians it says be filled with the spirit how do you fill yourself with the spirit by speaking to yourself. Many people, you put a full stop there. No, but by singing hymns, by singing hymns and psalms, Amplified says, by pleasing and dancing. So any place and dance will bring God in your life because place calls God. I would want you to Light this because it's what I want to refer. Praise colors a cloudy on your head. We will bring a cloudy of God on your life. That God pleasant on you. That people will be able to notice something is on you. But you know what? You are a praiser. You are a person that dances. For God. I you get what I'm saying? Cloud comes on you. Now, check this. Exodus. Check this. Exodus 14. Exodus 14. Exodus 14. Exodus 14. Let's just start reading from verse 18. Look at this. He says, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh. Many of you know the story, isn't it? He says, when I've gotten me honor, he says, upon, uh, gotten me honor upon chariots and upon his, his chariots and upon his horsemen. He says, don't worry, I'm, I'm about to take the honor do from do the Egyptians that are coming to fight against you. Okay? Verse 19. He says, and the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind. So there was a pillar of cloud before them. But God removed the cloud and placed it at the back for a reason. 
He placed it at the back. So they were walking. But the cloud was at the back. Because at this time, the cloud is about to do something. It was in front to direct them. But this time it is at the back for another mission. Are you following what I'm saying? Verse 20. Verse 20. Verse 20. It came and it came between the camp of Egyptians and the camp of Israel. So Egyptians are coming. A cloud is simply moved and it stood right at the back. But it was in between the, Egypt, the Israel and the Egyptians. The Israelites are walking. The Egyptians are soldiers on horses running after these people. And he says, and it was a cloud of darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these people. geography Muna puzira? Hey. I'm just checking. Amene mungu ziwa kumene kuri Lady C. Dinda? Ha? Huh? Okay. Ndi kufuna ndi padigize geography yanu, ndi uzimu. Kuti zindi tandi zebu ino. Mm. Bible lima nena kuti, njira yo peka, ya idu, ya chidure, imene ana kadusa, inakaa tengira 12 days kukafika the other side. Imate 12 days anakaka fika malo enawa. Koma mungu anate ngira ya chitari. Chifuka pamene anasanka pote akaduse even pa Lady C. Mungu anasanka pamene Lady C. Ali wankuru um. Osati pamene waninga. Pamene wapanga. Chimena kunene la pakuti. Cloudy inari kuwala kwawa. Koma ndima kwawa. Sisi na chitike siku limuzi. Anali muledi si akuyenda. Ichi chipira. Chamazi chai moku. Si shire river tu iya. He? Eh? Ndiledi si. Kani mafuna geography yana. Chai moku. Akuyenda. Pangono pa. Nditi yana. Ena angono angono. Anai ndaso kari ntunda hotel. Si unali kutamanga yae. Pangono pangono chonjo. Mina pena mwenye. Tatenti imeka ye chonjo. Kwa manga kare aima. Kumaya mwisa ana kutani. Cloud ija. Was taking a control. Jambo lima hindi tazosa. Even masana awa maenda muusiku. Cloudy inapangisa masana kukala usiku. Mm. Kudisa maona kutanzatu wa jaripati. Mundifese sa. Mm. Koma guawa, kunali kuyera goka goka. Mm. Kunali beku tama angaya. Kunali beku changu, changu, teni, changu, teni, teni. Ah. Wana nafu na kuti asaone. Aislaili asamaone kuti eneme alipati. Mm. Ama antasa jite manta. Mm. Cloud covered them. Komaso cloud yomweyo. Inapangisa wakuti asaone kuti antu wali pati. Nda zizi fusa chuchitika njijani. Azienda, azesa ngata kuenda musiku mja asa kuenda. Mm. Menaya mpina kupala saripompa hapa. Mm. Chifuka maizim, maizla hapa. Mm. Agupumu lagaye kuma muledi situ nkati. Mm. Aguyamu isana. Mm. Ndufuna mvese. Mm. Ha? Mm. Komaso si pompo. See in a terrible way. Mkana kuna uri saw that the one came not near the other all night. Agu tu wina sana figa bafu bini zaki. Wina da gu agu pugu sa chariot. Don't you. Komo san figira zaki. Zaki yango zi endera. Cloud. Cloud. 21. See in a terrible cloud here. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by the strongest east wind that night and made the sea dry and waters divided. 22. Just listen to this. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and their left. 23. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. 24. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the horse of Egyptians through the pit of fire and of what? Tonsati cloud anari maso wake ya mungu kuyanga nirama eneme. Akuti the Lord looked unto the Egyptians through. He needed the cloud to see the enemy. By bringing the cloud, you had put 
ngati magrasi jo nje kuti munthu wosaona ndeyo kwampa sa magrasi aona Claudio anali maso amulungu aonere ndani wako de ata aona iwo akuti he troubled the egyptians ana yanga na mclaudi also goneza through the cloud ndikwamba kwa chida trouble in 25 25 and took off their chariot to hills ndipo anakulula ayala akavalo wao that they drove them heavily kuti sakuti tanga kwambiri kutulo sako ngamati kuchosa matala nachosa kuchosa mapeke mulungu anango pita kwango panga unscrew dala siri matamanga that's what the bible says siri mataku tamanga mulungu anango ligwira gwira chonjo kuligwira dala kuyesesa munthu kuyesesa dala siza tamanga the cloud tabu is a so that the egyptian said let us flee from the face of the lord for the for the lord fight us against them he didn't find them sana wabese ana israel so where do you find this cloud Please bring that cloud. If you are a pleaser, you walk with the cloud. That which God uses to see the enemy is just up on above your head. How do you expect anyone to touch a man of God and kill him? You are a pleaser. There is a crowd on your head. So if you praise God for your situation, you put the crowd over that area. And the crowd makes God see through. What is happening in that area? And he rises up as a God of God in your situation. What I'm telling you happened. If it happened, it can happen again. It can happen again to someone's life on your head a cloud of God Amen. 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 Are you ready now to dance? Okay. I will ask him to come and make an announcement uh, to call those people and dance with the knowledge now. The Bible says praise him with understanding. Don't just praise him. Praise him with understanding. That this praise is doing something to my life. I'm not just wasting time. It's not just come to church so that you can dance. No. It's scripture. And we want you to benefit from this.